Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we are back looking at some in the file stuff when it comes to the drone age dev server. Now remember when looking at the in the file stuff doesn't mean that it's going to be coming to the game this updates doesn't mean that it'll even be coming soon. It's just that it's kind of out and about and it's worth having a look at a few separate things that will probably be coming in the future. Now, uh, there is obviously some data mines out there. I'll make sure to link them in the description. We'll have a look at them at a later date. But I wanted to get this one done because there's actually a bunch of really interesting stuff in the files. The first one being this, uh, the Harrier GR7. Now, the Harrier GR7 is a further improvement of the GR5. And the GR5 is known colloquially, I suppose, as the Harrier 2. It's a big upgrade uh, to the Harrier. It's a 1990s variant. Um, at least uh, the GR7 is, and it's just a massive upgraded model of it. And the big thing about the GR5 was it was seen as like the second generation of the Harriers. So um, it has um, just massive improvements when it comes to its countermeasures, when it comes to the armaments it could have, and then also its general avionics. So it's going to be really fun. Uh, it's going to have a lot of cool stuff uh, on it and uh, work pretty well. Technically, this thing could actually carry six Sidewinders, which, uh, uh, if they're AIM-9Ls, uh, could be incredibly impressive um, when it comes to the vehicle. Obviously, has the guns in the bottom here. As you can see, more hard points in the center as well. And also, it should be able to carry Mavericks and, of course, Paveways and everything that comes alongside of it. Just understand that this is nowhere near done. This is in the same state as pretty much the Pucara, if you remember that from a few updates ago. So don't expect to see this soon. Maybe we see it, maybe we don't, but don't get your hopes up is basically what I'm saying. Now, the next one we're gonna have a look at is the AH-2 Royvalk. This is, of course, the South African helicopter and it makes sense for this one to be in the files uh, because, of course, uh, they were well. There was a data mine of a decal, which really could only lead to this vehicle and nothing else, unless they were going to add in a Blenheim from the Second World War. The Roy Valk, of course, is the South African pride and joy for helicopters. It is an attack helicopter and has access to some pretty crazy armaments. It's from, of course, the 90s, um, at least its first flight. It was introduced in uh, 2011 as a vehicle. It has access to a 20 millimeter, which you can see already modeled on it, and should get access to 1680 gems, the Macopas, and of course, Mistral air to air missiles. You can see it has six hard points uh, on, you know, uh, you know, collectively across the board, which should be really nice. It should also be able to have some rockets, some laser guided stuff. Overall, just a really fantastic vehicle um, powered by two engines that you can see in uh, this setup here. Now, I will say there is problems with this model right now. It is definitely not finished. Um, it's actually kind of annoying because it's crashing my asset viewer over and over and over again, which is why there's probably some weird cuts in this video. Um, so yeah, it does have its countermeasure pod though, or I believe it's the countermeasure pod on the sides. So that's modeled in, which is nice. And my guess is this will come in the second dev server. Um, just because, you know, it's going to be a pre-order pack um, after the decal came out. The next one is a similar variant to something we've already seen. So in the dev server right now, you actually already have some SU-25s. Uh, this is the standard tech tree one. It's these SU-25. Then you have the SU-25K, which is this one. This is the premium one, which is about... Then you have this one. Now this is the SU-25 late, or at least that's what it's named as. Now, uh, the only real differences that I'm seeing <clears throat> between the SU-25 and the SU-25 late is I believe the engines, uh, because when I have a look here, so you've got the SU-25, it has this area here, this little, what looks like an intake, and then it has the standard engines with the, uh, you know, the decent, uh, I suppose you'd call it exhaust on it. But when you have a look at the late variant, um, you can see that it's uh, much more, I suppose, closed off, um, trying to shoot out uh, the stuff a little bit better. But um, I'm not very well versed in different SU-25 variants, mainly because there's millions of them and it's very hard 
to uh, keep track of them. But what is interesting about this vehicle is all three of them have their cockpits uh, modeled fully. So if you are interested, you can kind of see the different cockpits. This is the SU-25 late one. And then also this is the standard SU-25 cockpits. And of course the K. There are pretty much no differences between them. So they'll probably have exactly the same usefulness. Uh, maybe they'll have different countermeasures or different ideas, but yeah. So instead of just having two SU-25s, there might be another one which is also on the horizon. Just to kind of show you one of the cool drones which is getting added, this is the MQ-1L. This is the uh, pr kind of the Hellfire drone, uh, the one that they showed on the test stream. Unfortunately, custom battles are not working right now on the dev server, so I can't really show you this in action um, efficiently. Um, I can show the recon one, but this is uh, sat in the files. Uh, the recon drone, of course, um, is pretty interesting, but I've showed it in a bunch of videos already. And also, uh, there is a USSR drone and a China drone in the files, but right now, they have placeholders. Uh, they actually have the Jaguar GR1 as placeholders, which is kind of weird, because that seems to be the go-to thing to use as a placeholder, and I just kind of wonder why. Um, it, it just seems like a weird thing, you know, uh, to actually do. On top of vehicles in the files, there is also some other things which are pretty nice to see, and it's actually some updated models. So Sweden, even in their modern vehicles, used World War II tankers, and now we actually have a updated Swedish gunner. You can see here, uh, he's uh, completely different, way more modernized uh, compared to the standard Swedish gunner, which was this one uh, with the hat and obviously the general jumpsuit, but uh, this is much more proper. So you can see we now have some new models for the Swedish guys and not to be outdone, there is also the Japanese guys who look absolutely baller um, when it comes to their guys. So look at that. Isn't that fantastic? That's an absolutely wonderful model in general. Um, so these are things, these are guys that you're going to see in stuff like the UDES. You're also going to see uh, the Japanese guys in the Type 93, for example, and maybe some other open top things that come to the game later on. Uh, I will say a lot of these models have been updated over time, but some of them have been kept the same and the parachutists are one of them. My boys, the parachutists need a little bit of help, you know, They're, it would be really nice if we finally got an update to these guys. They've been unfortunately left for at least 10 years now when it comes to the game. It's a very sad state of affairs. They're really showing their age. Uh, ships also have something that's kind of interesting. So they have the Cyclone. Uh, this is the Cyclone class Cyclone. It's not finished yet, as you can see, the textures aren't fully there. But this thing is actually really interesting. So you know how people have been asking for modern day uh, kind of patrol ships or frigates? Well, enter the US. This is the Cyclone class patrol ship and uh, it was in commission starting in the 1993 when most of these ships were actually launched uh, between 1992 and 1994. So this is a very modern machine uh, compared to others that we have in the game. Um, it has uh, four diesel engines. Um, it also uh, can go 35 knots and only has 28 personnel on it, um, which is you know quite a small amount, obviously. Uh, one of the interesting things about this, though, is its range of weaponry. And this is where it could get kind of spicy for the vehicle. Since it's a very modern machine, it has some standard guns on it. So it has two 25 millimeters, it has two 50 cals and two 40 millimeter uh, grenade launchers. So you have like these big guns over here, which I'm guessing are the 25s. So you can see that they have the belt modeled and everything. They're probably going to be very rapid fire. Um, you know, you've got two uh, on the machine, which is quite cool. Uh, the 50 cals are here on the side, uh, obviously not fully textured yet. And then on top of these things, it also could have six Stinger Sams uh, in a setup. Uh, so that could easily be somewhere on the machine. And also two MK60 quadruple BGM 176B uh, Griffin B missiles. Now these things are precision guided munitions. Uh, they're developed by good old Raytheon and pretty much uh, the idea of it is it can be launched from the ground or air as a rocket powered missile or dropped from the air as a guided bomb. So 
you'd fire these off and it would just annihilate anything that was around the place. Now, obviously right now, if you have a look at the model, it isn't on there. You know, there isn't actually that um, anywhere on it. So you don't have to worry about that, uh, for example. But uh, at the same time, it's uh, something that uh, something that you may be uh, a little bit afraid of when it comes to the future if they decide to add this especially since they just added the douglas so this could easily come into the game at the top of like the coastal ships for example there's also some decorations so we have a little quadcopter which has found its way into the files um, this one looks really cool <clears throat> um, you can see it here whoop it's a little bit small uh, but yeah, it's just a little quadcopter. I'm guessing this is going to be for an event somewhere, maybe a heli event or maybe a battle pass or something. It's just a little drone uh, that you can kind of uh, move around the place. So this got added. And then also there was uh, something else which got added, which was a helmet. And now I'm not very good with my helmets. I don't know uh, which one it is or what it's from, but it's known as the 6B48. Uh, so it is this one. Uh, it kind of looks like the Swedish one to me uh, that we saw before, but obviously I'm, I'm not an expert on these things. I'm sure one of you guys will know where this thing is from. There's also the Spanish uh, machine gun or sorry, assault rifle in the files. I can't find it anywhere. Um, I, I can't remember its name. So um, unfortunately I've been looking for like 30 minutes, but I kind of left it be. But that's some of the additional stuff in the files. So you can see there's a, there's a ton of different things coming in. A lot of it is pretty cool, so look forward to it in future areas. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Nicholas Richardson, Elove Goat, Pyman675, Winter Scientist, Merciless Reaper, Jerry Prevolt, Megadino King, Orange Tail, Teddy, John Ryman, Universe, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Moxie, B. Young, Uncle Bean, Sem Arslan, Derek R, Bereen, Lafouche, and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.